This week on Cameo, we feature three advertisers who will shed light on the growing pains of the advertising business. Every single company has their own approach. I think that discipline has broken down a lot in the industry. Seven years ago around the Caribbean, Jamaica was the leading exponent of creative and advertising. Today, I question that. Stay tuned for Cameo. We used to say advertising is any form of paid non-personal communication by a sponsor and usually not necessarily identified. Sometimes yes, by brand. But today, the non-personal thing has changed it. The whole revolution of the social media, it has become more engaging and we actually are moving into people's personal space but not by interruption so much, but more by invitation. Advertising still has a traditional background, which we now call above the line, um, because it's clear, it's, it's understood that way that somebody's running an ad, you see the ad, it could be any one of the clients, a monogram ad, etc. But today, it's a mix of both, what we call above the line and below the line. In the middle of it, social media started as below, it's now above because it's measurable. Managing Director of Marketing Plus, Communications Limited, Kingsley Morris, has over 25 years of experience and a thirst for innovation. I'm in charge of the overall thing, so I guess I, I, I think of myself as a leader. So um, we have different departments that uh, all bring the cog together. Um, I just try to make certain that everybody is on the track, going in the right direction, and um, that things are happening as it should. We try to get strong, bright people who can relate with the client very well, and um, we basically take people's brands and make them better. Jamaica, like everywhere else, is changing. In some areas, we tend to be a bit of a pace setter, when it, with regard to music and some of the trends that catch. Um, our culture is very strong, but in terms of advertising, unfortunately, I think we're falling a little behind. The whole thing is evolving at such a high pace that if we don't stay in touch, we're gonna start losing some of the edges that we have. And I actually think that um, seven years ago around the Caribbean, Jamaica was the leading exponent of creative and advertising. Today, I question that because I think we're, we're just not keeping up fast enough with the changes and the changes are dramatic. It took 38 years for radio to acquire um, users or listenership of 50 million. It took TV in the region of 13 years to reach that 50 million. It took the internet four years, and then it, it, it really blew up. Facebook took them less than a year, just to put things in perspective. The way how people make decisions today, they take recommendations more from their peers on social media and from references than they do ads. And even when they watch ads, they're still referring to that as a go-to. So what has happened is that the way how people buy, the way how people interrelate with brands have changed dramatically. And therefore the whole industry has to change. We're not designing enough ads for mobile today. We're not designing enough ads that are getting to people. And I'd like to say that the web, Web 2.0, which is the second generation of web, is something where the ads actually come into your space. Now we buy a space and look, wait for you to see it. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming more direct, it's becoming more personal, it's becoming more engaging. Our universities are doing pretty well. Um, they, I think, have adapted. They are producing young graduates, but the graduates are not finding enough space in this industry. And it is a growing industry around the world, yet still I think there are businesses in Jamaica that are trying to walk around the advertising, 
which it doesn't, the, the agency industry is not the way going forward for the, the country. There is so much more to learn within the industry and I think we should develop the industry and actually become a central hub of the services that can be offered. It's a big opportunity for Jamaica. We need to be like understanding the international market, but I think because of the overall economy, it's difficult. So I have to understand what happens there, but that's a big challenge where the big companies come in and try to change the rules. That's one of the challenges that we have. But if you have a good product and you run ads, I want to, I can give many examples. Some of them are not my clients, but just one of them that that is very straightforward to me is the way how Digicel just came in here, and some of the companies you're looking on that are doing very well are not even 20 years old in the country, and even Lasco. Those companies saw success in five years. These are companies that believe in advertising. There are many people who don't do it, and they are around for 20 years struggling. So I would venture to think that every client that I have that has done based on recommendations, they have been successful. I can't name one that has just failed like that. And if they've failed, usually it's an internal thing. If we don't go social, we won't be talking to people. It's not a thing on the side anymore. It's, it's, it's central to how everybody makes decisions. So um, I mentioned mobile, mobile as well. So there is a shift in that general direction. Um, we actually have another company that will specialize more in that area but um, it also will act as a marketing company. It's called So Media. So it's, 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 it's aligning to the whole content and delivery of content. But the future, a lot of videos, YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world. People don't even realize that. And I'm here to tell you that things change so quickly that before the end of 2015, social media videos um, Facebook, viewership of videos on Facebook increased past, past YouTube, all right? So the future is that we have to become more nimble, we have to be more responsive, and the investment has to go generally in that direction. Coming up next. The chief purpose of advertising is to let people be aware of our clients' products. And the chief purpose of advertising is to let people be aware of our clients' products and services and to try and persuade them to break their old habits and switch to whatever we're trying to sell for our clients at that time. It's a persuasion business. We had a sit down with Beverly Hurst, the managing director at Prism Communications. She spoke to the challenges and successes of her industry. Sterling Asset Management actually was our very first client when we switched to being an advertising agency. And it was, they were opening up just after the meltdown of the financial industries in the late 90s. And people were very, wary and distrustful of any banking institute, any financial institution. And so we came up with the icon of the dolphin for their logo, which has been successful for them. And we chose a dolphin because it is uh, known as a, a very intelligent, trustworthy creature, dependable, and they still use it. And this is 15 years later. Globe Insurance Company, was an, a business in, focused mainly on a business insurance and they wanted to expand into a more customer service all round insurance company and we helped them with that transition. The National Health Fund had a problem gaining the trust of the Jamaican people in um, a government-based health system 
and people were not registering and they tried everything to get people to register and then uh, we assisted in coming up with a, a testimonial type campaign where we had people from all walks of life testify and um, we did it across the entire media thing, with press, radio, television, of people giving testimonies on the amount of money they were saving by having the health card for chronic illnesses because it, that can be very expensive to be filling prescriptions for the same thing every month. And that worked out very well for them. People started registering it. At, it was so successful actually that they had to open a customer care um, center where people you know, could go and register and get their cards. And so. But I think the most exciting campaign that we've ever done was for Red Stripe. We did this disruptive campaign with a bear. That caused a lot of buzz towards bear drinking. People either hated the bear or loved the bear, but it was a complete buzz. And we did a lot of disruptive things with the bear, having him appear at strange places, doing things, stealing bear out of the warehouse, whatever. That was very exciting and very successful. I think it drew attention to Red Stripe and the company became very innovative by bringing out all these flavored beers and stuff. So that ended up to be a very successful campaign. I roll with the boss. The beer has been spotted! Everybody roll up! We are partners uh, of a network, an advertising network called Worldwide Partners. And um, they're in like 120 offices around the world and we have a meeting, an annual uh, meeting and when you go to these meetings and you're talking to your other partners um, they're facing the same challenges that we're facing and I don't know I just think it's uh, it's a changing world and it's going to be very difficult to overcome some of the things you know you just have to find innovative ways to work with it I mm -hmm. guess. There are a lot of young, ambitious uh, people going into the marketing industries now. So a lot of the brand managers and the marketing officers are young people. They're enthusiastic, they're energetic. They don't seem to sleep. <laughs> so a major challenge is trying to keep up with them. Another challenge is, as I said before, some of the media houses have become more innovative and they're offering services directly to the clients. The media houses can, for example, give you a discounted package because they have the, the wherewithal and we can't do that. And a lot of times it's difficult to persuade them that we can't match these these costs and stuff. Well, we have a, a very vibrant set of young people in here. And believe me, sometimes they themselves bring innovation um, into the business. Okay. They, they see opportunities in certain things like um, videoing certain things and um, converting it into interesting uh, outputs, uh, just crazy things that they see as opportunities to be innovative and sometimes it's something to do with the client, sometimes it's not. Um, sometimes it's just innovative ways to do things in-house and um, I don't know, it's just one of those things that you can't really plan for innovation. It, you see opportunities arise and you use those opportunities to be innovative. The demand in the world now is um, digital, as you know, mm -hmm. because 
that's the way the whole world is going. So the future plans is to probably expand our digital department. We really have a very efficient digital department at the moment, but the demands are getting higher and higher. And I think we have to think of innovative ways to use the digital sphere to, um, to expand the outreach to, to people. I think that discipline has broken down a lot in the industry. I find one of the major challenges we have with young people just coming into the, the business world is that um, they're very free-willed and free-minded and it's, discipline is a, is a big part of it. So I think I would say to them that if you're going to make this a career, you also have to be ready to act like it's a business. I know it's a fun type of industry. A lot of them appear um, to believe that it's a fun industry. So that is a part of the discipline problem. You come in and you, it's like drawing and painting and writing and whatever, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And it is, I think I'd have to advise that if you're going into the industry, it's also a very, it's a fun business, but it's also a very serious business. So you have to be disciplined. You have to want to follow the rules. And um, if you're going to make it, to, you know, into a career, you have to expose yourself to what is going on in the rest of the world now. Coming up next, Wayne Stewart. The product or the services that our, our clients is trying to sell. And a lot of that information resides in the client's own business. The Vice President of Marketing at Dunlop Corbin Communications, Wayne Stewart, filled us in. Well, way back in 1956, Mr. Jerry Dunlop, who's painting hands behind me, um, went into business as an advertising agency. Um, later in time, he was, he was joined by a fellow by the name of John Corbin, a Barbadian guy that had moved right throughout the Caribbean opening advertising agencies. He was a Caribbean man at the time. He, it would have been even before Federation. Um, so he got to Jamaica, he had, by the time he got to Jamaica, he had already opened a, a business, uh, agencies in Barbados and in Trinidad. Came here, left us and went to Bahamas and Bermuda as, so that there is a, a network of Corbin agencies of which we are still a member. In advertising, I think of as paid advocacy. Uh, typically, it's 80% um, of the time it's it's paid advertise is being paid for by for-profit companies in our um, economic system. But even so, there are lots of um, social um, people wanting to influence social uh, behavior, and sometimes people running for political office might use advertising. But it's, it, it, it's different from, from other forms of communication in as much as it's clearly being paid for by someone. So the consumer knows to be on guard. The Jamaican advertising industry has is, is, been around for a very, very long time. I think the first advertising agency was Macmillan. Our company is a member of the Advertising Agencies Association of Jamaica. I think we've got 16 members outside of that Within that membership, there's a, a wide range of size of agencies. Some may be relatively small with four or five people. Others might have 30 people. Um, so there's a range of, of, of size. Um, but that doesn't necessarily translate immediately to competency. You may have very small agencies that are very, very good. You don't like you to have very big ones that are lousy because they wouldn't get big if they were terrible. Aside from the fellows who are in this, in, in this body, you also have a lot of independent people uh, of varying sizes who are functioning as agencies. They may not be members of our association, but they're out there and they are, they are competitive and they're working with, working with us. One of the hallmarks of our association is independence of, from the media. And 
so there are also lots of people that we compete with that are related to media entities who function as, as agencies. So that's basically the, the universe. It, it's, a, it's a variety of people. There are people working in different, um, different ways. Some people do everything themselves. Others prefer to work with independent producers and with independent um, suppliers in the sense of, of um, producing a, a television commercial. Some, some agencies will do it entirely within their, their own business. Others will choose to work with outside suppliers. It's very much a, um, a matter of choice. It's Court's 33rd birthday celebration. Quincy is my number one. Tomato, ketchup, poor on grape, tomato, hot dog. There are many and varied. There are also great opportunities. Things are, things are a lot simpler today. We can do a lot more than we could do if you go back. If you go back 25 years, you used to send out to get type if you're making an ad, a, a press ad. Today, that's on your computer and you just, you just do it. Similarly, uh, we were looking at some 1982 commercials yesterday. And those, we had to go to Miami to get the, um, the post-production work done. Today, you do that entirely in Jamaica. Um, so we have lots and lots of advances happening. In terms of problems, I'm sure we have a lot of those too. Um, it, it's, it's always very, very challenging to understand what is of concern to the consumer so that you know what, what to say. Um, and then within the business, um, it, it, is, it is wide open. The very, um, the very technologies that make it easy for us to do it in Jamaica also make it easy for a very wide raft of people to also do it. So we are open to considerable competition. The, the product or the service that our, our client is trying to sell. And a lot of that information resides in the client's in own business. They, they know their own business far better than we will. And as much as they can share with us, the better it is. Well, I think it helps to be smart. <laughs> I think it helps to be interested in media. I, I mean, if you're, if you're the sort of person that doesn't want to see anything on television, you don't want to listen to the radio, I don't think this is a business for you. It's a, it's a business that's involved in engaging with, with consumers and we work through the media. So I think, I think you need to, to be interested in communications. And that's it this week for Cameo. Even in the midst of challenges, our creative industries continue to shine. I've been your host, Amitra Prasad Webb. Join us again next time.